Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Belial, and you are listening to or watching Radio Maine. Today I have with me Matt Russ, artist and also a longtime friend and colleague of mine. It's really a pleasure to have you here with me today. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's a great pleasure to be here and to see you again. I really enjoy, um, well, every time I see you, actually, but the, the fact that you and I now have known each other for, well, you know, seven years, something yeah, like that. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. So there, I've actually interviewed you a few different times for various reasons. Right. So it's kind of a, it's a strange, strangely public continual iteration of our ongoing <laughs> <laughs> friendship relationship with one another. Yes. That not everybody has that kind of back and forth the way that you and I have had. Right, right. I feel like uh, over the years, Lisa, we've, we've met... Um, you know, for, for formal conversations like these, but also um, uh, at various art-related events, usually in, in, in various venues. So, um, truly, it's it's uh, it's it's great to to continue this this conversation. So, one of the things that um, I think about with you actually has more to do with your wife. And um, the first time, I think it was probably the first time you and I actually interacted also, but I had written a story about Life Flight for a local publication. Um, and your wife, Casey, played a prominent role in the story. Today I happened to see a helicopter flying overhead and I, I thought about her and you and how this all had started. And it really was a very kind of traumatic and difficult time in both of your lives. Yes, uh, Lisa. Um, in, in 2011, um, my wife was in a very serious accident. Um, she was in a plane crash, in fact, um, flying in a small plane um, from Matinicus Island, which, uh, for those who aren't familiar with, is an island about 20 miles off the coast of, of Maine. Um, she was out there visiting a friend and, and um, was flying back to the mainland in a small plane that um, crashed into the ocean. And um, it's quite an amazing story in that uh, all four individuals who were on the plane survived not only the crash but everything that that happened in the the hours following and um there were many different individuals who were um heroes that day in in, in saving uh, my wife casey's life um, and also the others on board um, but one of the prominent players was uh, life flight of maine which uh, for those who aren't familiar with life flight is a uh, helicopter, now also airplane-based uh, um, emergency medical transport service that, that covers the entire state of Maine. And uh, Casey was um, ultimately transported from uh, Penn Bay Hospital in, in Rockland um, to Central Maine Medical Center in Lewiston, um, where she uh, underwent um, life-saving surgeries. And... Um, as you say, it was it was quite a traumatic time for the both of us. But um, as as the years have have gone by, we've been able to reflect upon um, the positive aspects of 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 that that experience. Um, in the sense that uh, we learn much more about Life Flight of Maine and what what that service does for countless people um, throughout the state uh, over the years. So we've both become um, quite active in, in uh, fundraising for Life Flight, and, and um, we've gotten to know not only the, the, the pilot and the, the, the flight paramedics who were on Casey's actual flight, and I believe when you interviewed Casey for that story, uh, they were also there for the conversation. Uh, incredible individuals but also the entire organization and, and what they do. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously, if we could go back in time, we would not have <laughs> gone through that experience, but we did, and um, it's a happy ending. 
for me, I, you know, whenever I think, whenever I see a life flight helicopter go overhead, I think of this idea that these were people who literally, in Casey's example, literally fell out of the sky mm -hmm. into the ocean. And also um, this, this sort of interim piece that I believe that there were many local people who got on their boats, saw this happen, and went rushing out to the scene to try to help with this, um, what really was a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the fact that there was a happy ending has everything to do with people's willingness to move towards something that other people wouldn't, other people would freeze. Other people wouldn't know what to do. I think that speaks so strongly of what we have here in Maine, the sense of community, the sense of willingness to help our neighbors and kind of step toward challenges rather than just let people deal with their things on their own. Has that been your experience living here? Absolutely, Lisa. Um, I was born in Maine and, 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 and grew up um, not far from where the studio is uh, in, in Cape Elizabeth, um, but I've traveled all over the state in my in my life, um, and I think there is this great sense of of community, as if Maine is a small town. Um, I'm sure I'm not the first to to use that analogy, but um, uh, that particular accident was was a case in point where, um, as you mentioned. The local people of Matinica Island, uh, lobstermen, in fact, were the first on the scene. And, and when the call went out um, after the, the plane had gone down, um, the fleet of, of lobster boats, um, as I understand it, tore out across the bay and, and um, directly into the, into, the, um, into the fray, as it were. And if it wasn't for... Good people like that, um, things could have could have taken a different turn. So yes, indeed, I I, I feel it every day um, as I as I travel throughout Maine. Um, a great sense of um, community and and um, general respect for 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 one another. Your pieces also reflect your love of Maine, and and that's literally a situation where you step into what you are trying to um, capture because you will put your equipment on your back and hike for quite a ways to set yourself up in a place where you can fully experience what you're trying to capture. Tell me about that. I'd be happy to, uh, Lisa. In fact, uh, this painting uh, that hangs um, behind us is, is, a, is a, a perfect example of um, what you're referring to, and uh, I'll talk more about it specifically um, in in a, in a minute. But um, generally speaking, my my mode of, of working has always been um, to work directly in the field. Um, I do have uh, an art studio uh, in Waterville where I live, um, but I do very little actual painting in that space. It's really sort of a um, a staging area for the painting excursions that I take uh, all throughout the state. Um, my true studio is uh, really a, a frame pack that I carry on my back um, that carries my um, foldable French easel, as it's called, and all of the gear that I would need for, for a day of painting. And as you say, I, I take that, that pack with me um, into my painting location and uh, in some cases, it does involve um, a considerable hike. Um, and that's where this uh, particular painting comes in, for instance. Um, this, this is a painting called Vianna Mountain Road, uh, number one. And um, the town of Vianna, and indeed, it is pronounced Vianna here in Maine, as you know. Um, place names in Maine sometimes are pronounced differently than you might expect. Um, Vianna is... Uh, in the Belgrade Lakes area, which, which is in central Maine, um, and it's a favorite place of mine. I've, I've explored um, this area on cross-country skis and snowshoes and um, mountain bike and, <laughs> and on foot in the summer. Um, and uh, 
This particular uh, painting was done in the month of February. Um, I carried my, my gear in uh, probably about a mile from, from where I had parked my car um, and set up my, my, my remote studio, as it were, uh, for the entire day uh, uh, to capture um, this scene as, as it un unfolded in, in front of my eyes. And um, for me, being in the landscape um, is the greatest source of inspiration. Um, and that's why I, I refuse to take a photograph and then go back to my studio and, and, and try to recapture that sense of inspiration that I feel in the actual place. Um, for me, it's, it's the, 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 the sights and the sounds that, that I experience um, over the course of hours that inform my decisions in terms of um, what my composition will be and, and um, how the painting will unfold in real time. And I have with me um, also another Vienna Mountain piece yes. that actually belongs to me. So if you, if anybody's looking at it and they really like it, you cannot have this one. <laughs> um, this was actually given to us as a gift uh, to my husband and I um, for our wedding. Um, and, it and it went very nicely with another piece that we own of yours that um, for me, both of the pieces really capture something about um, the stillness, the quietude, um, the, the sense that Maine is a place of um, peace, really, if you, if you are able to be in the right place at the right time. Absolutely, Lisa. Um, I would, I would uh, add, uh, if I may, that, that, um, that nature generally, but for me specifically, um, uh, uh, Maine, the Maine environment um, is not only a place of peace, but it can also be um, a place of healing. Um, and if I may, I'd like to share with you um, an experience I had as a, as a young person. Um, uh, back in 1987, I guess it was, I was in seventh grade, um, I underwent uh, a surgery for scoliosis, which is a congenital uh, curvature of the spine, um, something that I, I was born with and, and had been monitored as I, as I was growing. Um, and in that year, um, I under, underwent uh, what's called a spinal fusion, um, which is a surgery to essentially arrest the continuing curvature of, of the spine. And uh, it took place in, in Boston Children's Hospital, but my recuperation, of course, happened back at home. And part of my recuperation was to go for, as, as, as early as I could get on my feet and go walking, um, was to go for walks uh, in, the, in the woods nearby uh, my home in Cape Elizabeth. And I wasn't aware of it at the time. Uh, this is only retrospectively that I've, that I've considered this um, and thought about it, but um, those 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 hours I spent walking through the woods by myself um, were were incredibly uh, healing. Um, to be in nature um, with no other distractions, no other people, um, and uh, to just let nature wash over you. Um, Really was it was an important <laughs> experience for me, and um, I think that as I as I got older, I, I started to realize that um, whatever it was I, I was going through, it didn't have to be a, a major trauma like like I'm referring to, but any sort of problem that I was facing or puzzle I was trying to solve um, could always be solved more easily. Um, by walking in, into the into the outdoors, as it were, and um, as an artist, I I, um, I tap that same that same vein. Um, I, I I go to the to nature to 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 find something, um, 
whether it's to to find uh, mental clarity um, or um, just a, a sense of uh, a sense of strength. Um, it's why I go out into the 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 Kennebec Highlands um, in Vienna. It's why I I go to the top of Mount Batty in Camden, um, the islands of Maine. Um, there's always something to be learned um, in nature, and uh, I, th I think you've probably experienced sim similar similar things. I know you you like to go running and and do long distance runs. Um, and uh, I think you'll agree that, that nature always has something to, to offer us. Well, that's one of the things that I like about, about this piece behind us is this, this path that you've created that's very lightly tread upon. Mm. It, it's kind of suggests that maybe it's just you. Maybe you were the one who um, went into nature to set up your... Um, or portable studio and and capture this for other people so that you can almost um, bring the space back to others that you could bring um, by providing you know an image for someone on a canvas you're actually you're saying here's this space this I'm representing something that's available to you you just need to step outside your door and I think that for me that's why your pieces are always kind of a touch point that I can, I can look at your pieces and I can go, oh, okay, there it is. Mm. It's always there. Because you're right, when I go running, um, I'm actively in the middle of it, but of course you can't run all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's the ability to continually just stop and kind of take a minute and then kind of proceed on with your day. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking, um, Lisa, about this, this, this series of paintings that I did. This is one of, of five, in fact. Um, from Vienna Mountain, but um, I think you're right. Uh, you know, obviously, this experience of painting in the field was was very personal. Um, I was there alone. I was going through um, whatever thoughts I had in my own head. But in in some ways, this this two dimensional surface it's a, it's a, it's a fiction, if you will. But but um, it's something that that is an artifact from that experience from that moment that that you bring back from that experience and, and hopefully share with others that's always that's always the hope um, I think most artists would would agree that um, you know they want their work to be to be seen and and to to be understood to a certain degree and, and hopefully to to convey um, a particular message, and I'm, and I'm glad to hear that that maybe some of that um, comes through uh, to you, and and hopefully to to others as well. You have a strong Ireland connection. You've spent time there in various ways. Why is it that Ireland has called you over and um, caused you to want to partake of its? Um, beauty and its people and its land? Well, my interest uh, in Ireland, uh, Lisa, began um, through stories that my father told me. Um, he spent um, a summer in Dublin. I think he was uh, 20 years old at the time, and um, an opportunity had come his way to to work in Dublin for, for a summer, and, and uh, his stories of the Irish people, um, the Irish landscape, Irish culture um, were always of interest to me. Um, and it wasn't until um, I was studying at Colby College that I had the opportunity to travel there myself. Uh, at the time, Colby had a um, a program in Cork, Ireland, in, in Cork City, um, which is on the southern coast of, of Ireland. And um, interestingly, it was most popular, uh, the program was most popular among pre-med students because it was one of the few um, programs abroad that allowed students to keep up with their prerequisites for med school. Um, the University College Cork um, was a place where 
students could seamlessly keep up with their their studies and 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 not get off track somewhere along the line um however there there was also a connection made through colby um to a, a small art college in that same city uh, called Crawford College of Art. And in much the same way, um, it became a popular program for art majors. And students who were majoring in art at Colby could take a year abroad and still keep up with their requirements, whether they were art history courses or actual studio courses. And um, when I discovered that that program existed and was was uh, was a possibility for me, um, I remembered those stories my father had told me and thought, this is the time to to see, see the place for myself. So indeed, I spent my entire junior year um, of college uh, in Cork um, studying art, um, but perhaps more importantly, um, expanding my my horizons. Um, Ireland is an, ama an amazing place. I don't know if you've ever been there, um, but um, the landscape is incredibly beautiful. Uh, there's some parallels to Maine. Obviously, um, the coastline is one big coastline when you think about it, um, but particularly the West Coast is, is a very, very rugged and, and, um, and wild place that, that is sort of the mirror image of um, Maine's coast. Um, but also, uh, I found the, the Irish people to be really uh, incredibly warm and, and, and wonderful, um, very welcoming. Of course, there's the connection, the, the historical connection between America and, and Ireland. But um, the friends I made there um, were just so special. Also, very um, a very musical um, culture, and that was a huge part of my experience there as well. Um, one thing I, I love about Ireland is that music is everywhere, and and it can exist um, in in informal ways um, wherever you go. So that, for instance, um, walking into any pub in Cork, um, you were likely to find a group of musicians casually gathered. Um, playing traditional tunes, um, not amplified through microphones, but, but just in the corner of the room, almost as a, as a backdrop to, to life. And, um, and also my friends uh, all liked to sing. Um, it was not uncommon to go to a party in Cork, and at a certain point of the night, um, someone would turn the stereo off and people would actually sing songs. That was something sort of new to me, <laughs> but of course is not new to the, to the, human, to the human race. So um, I think you're very impressionable at that age as well, junior in, in college. So I, I uh, absorbed a lot of, of that and, and um, tried to carry it with me um, when I returned back to the States. Um, just that sense of, of fun, of of music, um, of adventure, and um, I've been back a number of times. I, I went back um, after I graduated from from Colby and, and uh, through a, a work visa program, uh, worked for an additional year back in Cork City, which was which was wonderful. Um, but I have not gone back in the the guise um, of an artist, and I'd like very much to do that. I, I know that there are. Um, art residencies in different parts of Ireland, and I think it would be really fun to, to go back and, and um, perhaps interact with the Irish environment um, as, as I have with the main environment for so many years uh, through art. Do you have any Irish heritage? I do, in fact, but um, I, I always felt that I did. <laughs> because of that instant connection I felt when I was there. Um, we recently discovered that, that um, my family uh, has uh, roots in Galway, um, in addition to, to other parts of the British Isles. So it was just nice to see it uh, um, confirmed. Um, and this was through the help of a, a cousin of mine who, who got 
uh, into ancestry as, as um, people seem to, to do um, more and more these days. So, um, and Galway is a very special place um, as well. So glad that there's a little bit of Galway in my, in my blood. They are also very much known for music internationally, really. That's right. Um, uh, wherever you turn in 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 the in the town of Galway, um, there's some sort of a, a music festival going on or um, a session, if you will. Um, so, although I lived in Cork, I, I made many trips up that way and and uh, really really love that place. I remember growing up, my um, my grandmother would always talk about County Cork and about how her family was from County Cork. And her her parents had come over during, I believe it was the second potato famine, and uh, come to Boston. And it wasn't until later that we realized that everybody's from County Cork because <laughs> everybody, or most people, kind of that's where they got on the boats that then went to other parts of the world when they were trying to really escape famine and find new places for their families. And, and I, I think it's interesting because in this day and age, we think a lot about diaspora and we think a lot about people who aren't able to return or live in their homes of origin and what that, that means. Um, and we have a great example of this with Ireland kind of generationally, you know, you and I are both several generations um, removed from people who needed to leave their own countries. Have, have you ever considered this idea that, you know, in some way you, you felt called to return to a place of your ancestors? You know, Lisa, I've never, I've never, um, I've never considered that question, but, um, uh, perhaps, um, that's, uh, one of the reasons I, I felt so drawn to that place. Um, um, you know, I, I, for me, uh, now that Maine is my, <laughs> my spiritual center, um, I shudder to consider that I would ever have to, to leave, to leave that place. Um, and of course, um, as you say, diaspora is, is, uh, is an is a, a, a an ongoing <laughs> phenomenon in this world. It's in, it's in the news every day. People having to leave a place that that they love and 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 are connected to in a very very deep sense. So, um, in that sense, I, I can I can I can only uh, surmise how difficult that must be for for someone to have to to say goodbye. Um, to a place that, that is essentially part of who they are. I think that, you know, when you, when you talk about a spiritual center, mm -hmm. the, the sense that I have had from talking to various people who have needed to leave their places, their homes of origin, is, is this very um, significant, the importance of, of actually having and maintaining a spiritual center, whatever that looks like. Um, and for many people, that is the family, the family that they bring with them, the family that evolves wherever they end up. Um, and I know for you, your family, especially in this past year, has enabled you to, it's, it's provided several touch points that keep you grounded during all of this uncertainty and change. Indeed, um, Lisa, uh, the past year or so for me, as, as, as for so many, um, have been immensely challenging. Um, obviously, the pandemic being the unifying <laughs> experience that, that we've all been through. Um, coinciding with the, the, the pandemic, um, we had some loss in my family. Um, my uh, mother-in-law, uh, Mimi, uh, died in, in 2020. Uh, not COVID related, but um, uh, she was uh, for a period of time uh, uh, in a nursing home recovering uh, from a stroke. And, and thankfully, we, uh, my wife and I and, and, and family, um, were able to, to get her out of the nursing home just before the pandemic really started. In fact, um, St. Patrick's Day is my touch point for when that all happened, uh, March 17th. I think we were able to 
to get Mimi out of uh, her nursing home and back into her beloved farmhouse in, uh, in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, um, right around St. Patrick's Day, which is also right when um, things changed drastically and places like nursing homes became um, closed, so to speak. Um, I shudder to think of how difficult it might have been if had we not been able to to be face to face with with her in in the the final stages of her life. I know many people had to endure that sort of scenario. Um, um, so there was loss. My 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 mother in law uh, died um, in the summer of 2020, and it was uh, it was a very difficult experience. But um, close on the heels of of that loss was. Um, was a new arrival, and my, my stepson uh, and his wife um, welcomed a baby boy into, into the world, uh, my grandson, Jack. And um, I was reminded that uh, even though life can, can hand you these seemingly unbearable um, losses, um, life can also provide um, new gifts and um, that whole cyclical nature was was in in very clear focus um, uh, during that year um, uh, my stepdaughter also was just recently married uh, in November this past November so again um, a cause for for celebration but yes uh, family um, I think, for me, but also for a lot of people, uh, took on a, a, a new uh, importance and a new meaning during, during, during this time that we've been living through, and uh, uh, certainly has brought, brought my family closer. Uh, and I've, I've learned a lot about, uh, about life this, this past year or so. Matt, my sense is that your family has really been very supportive of you in many ways, but particularly with regard to your art. I mean, I, I think I've had the opportunity to meet members of your family, yes. aside from Casey. And um, I, I'm impressed by that. And I think that to, to know that you have, it's not just you showing up at the canvas and being in the woods, it's you and all the people who um, kind of are walking along with you in spirit. Did your parents ever, were they interested in art? Was art something that they engaged in? Um, my parents uh, have been really one of the great uh, inspirations to me in, in my life, uh, in, in my life as an artist, right, right from the very beginning. Um, I can't say that, that either of my parents were ever artists per se, but they were always very interested in 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 the world of art and from a very early age would bring my brother and and me um to museums um obviously the portland museum of art was was um, easily accessible to us um but also trips further afield to the boston museum of fine arts and and um and and they always impressed upon us that that uh, art was was something to be to be celebrated and, and enjoyed. Um, for me, uh, the actual creation of art um, was of great interest to me early on. It was it was a a way of uh, of of playing and and um, and just putting my imagination to work. Um, and, and my parents, uh, to their credit, I think recognized that. And in subtle ways, um, provided me opportunities to explore that part of who I was. Um, sometimes um, just the simple act of providing me materials, <laughs> nothing fancy, but there was always a a pad of paper available. There, there were always um, markers. There were always crayons. There were always pencils. Um, and I think they saw what joy it brought me. And um, 
just wanted to make sure that um, if it was something I wanted to continue with, they would always um, support that. And sadly, uh, I've, I've met friends in my life who had similar impulses, um, whose families didn't necessarily support um, that exploration. Um, I never had that that barrier. Um, I always had the I always had the support, the 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 full support of 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 my parents. Um, even to this day, uh, the easel, the portable easel we referred to earlier in the conversation, um, that was a gift from my parents. I, it, it's probably it's 25 years old now, um, and at the time they gave it to me, um, I'm not sure they knew quite what an impact it would have. But um, again, uh, that easel sort of represents that that um, that support that I've that I felt all along, and I'm very very grateful for it. Um, my wife has always supported my 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 pr pursuit of um, of an art career. She knows how. Um, how it's 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 who I am, and um, so to 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 know that um, there there are those of me uh, th those out there who are <laughs> um, cheering me on um, really really uh, makes a huge huge uh, difference as I as I continue to to explore. Matt, I learned something different about you every time we talk. <laughs> So it's really been my pleasure to have the time to spend with you today and kind of catch up on this latest iteration of your of your life. And um, I appreciate your willingness to come in and, and talk with me today. Lisa, it's always a pleasure to talk with you, and thank you. Can't wait to see you again. Absolutely. I've been speaking with artist Matt Russ. You can see his work at the Portland Art Gallery and on the Portland Art Gallery website. I hope that you have a chance to interact with him at an upcoming uh, art gallery opening, maybe maybe post-COVID when things open up a little bit more. He is um, truly a wonderful human being, and I am I have his pieces in my home, and I, I am reminded of this on a regular basis. But today it's been my, my good fortune to have you in person. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Lisa.